The caged flame stoked new hope in Ember. Hello and welcome to The Game Covered. My name's Rick and today I'd like to talk about The Last Campfire on the PlayStation 4. First announced at the 2018 Video Game Awards, The Last Campfire was created by a small team at Hello Games while the larger team worked on improving No Man's Sky. But we'd have to wait until March 2020 before we got confirmation that it was coming to PC and consoles, with August 27th 2020 being its final release date. The Last Campfire is an adventure puzzle game. You play as a character named Ember, who awakens in a strange place and is searching for their way home. Along the way, they rekindle hope in the forlorn, creatures like Ember who have become lost in hopelessness and despair, all while discovering what happened to this place and how it lost hope. To me, the story and the world feel like they're dealing with subjects like grief, loss, acceptance and mental health issues. And as someone who's been living with depression for as long as I can remember, I felt that it was handled in a very beautiful, respectful and moving way. The game made me feel happy, sad and peaceful all at the same time in a way that I haven't felt since playing Journey or Air Memories of Old. There is absolutely no combat in The Last Campfire. The aim of the game is helping people through solving puzzles. There are three main areas, each with a campfire to reignite. To do this, Ember must find and restore hope to the forlorn. The forlorn are spread out around each area, and Ember must find items and keys to unlock the way forward and solve simple environmental puzzles to reach them. There are seven forlorn in each area, and once Ember finds one, they must enter their mind and solve a puzzle to rekindle their hope. The puzzles, in my opinion, are perfectly balanced. They range from quick and simple to solve to more complex and engaging. And although none of the puzzles will keep you scratching your head for too long, they offer plenty of eureka moments, and it can feel very rewarding when the solution to an especially tricky problem reveals itself. Twisted by unseen. Once hope has been restored to the forlorn, they'll make their way back to the campfire. And once all seven have returned, the campfire will reignite and the way to the next area will open. It's a simple format, but one I never grew tired of. Each area is vastly different and well thought out, and I never found myself getting lost or bored. And the environments are so well designed that it never felt like a chore trying to solve its puzzles or help its residents. There are also treasure chests to find containing forgotten things, secret pages of a journal hidden away. There are 42 to find in total, and each one reveals a little more about the world Ember is lost in. Some of them can be well hidden and tricky to find, but discovering an otherwise hidden backstory makes them completely worth the effort. Thankfully, the number of treasure chests in the current area is visible in the top left corner of the screen when standing still and a white dot appears over items, characters and parts of the environment that can be interacted with, so nothing stays hidden for too long if you look hard enough. A sleeping pig trotters in the air. They looked happy. The Last Campfire is an absolutely beautiful game to behold. Ember and the Forlorn are perfect mascot material, bright coloured and brimming with personality, as are the various characters Ember meets along the way. The world, too, is absolutely gorgeous, full of bright and bold colours, with each area Ember visits being drastically different to the one that came before it. It oozes as much personality as the colourful characters that inhabit it. Personally, I favour visuals like this over hyper-realistic games, so to me, this is one of the best-looking games I've played in a while. The music and sound design, too, is superb. Paul Weir has done an amazing job with the music that constantly shifts between uplifting to melancholy and never fails to be moving in some way. It's used sparingly, so there's much more of an emotional impact when it does kick in, which very much works in the game's favour. Filling the space between musical compositions is equally as effective ambient noise to make the world Ember is exploring feel alive as well as a wonderful narration from Norwegian actress Rachel August, whose unique voice and whimsical delivery adds another layer of the fantastical to the adventure. You saw the frog? Did the frog mention me? You ask the frog about me, see what they say. Despite all the praise, however, the last campfire isn't perfect. Loading times aren't long, per se, but they are noticeable. 
The frame rate would regularly drop while exploring, and was most noticeable during the transition animation between interacting with the forlorn and appearing in their memory puzzle. I was also able to clip through several pieces of scenery, even getting stuck in one piece and having to restart. Luckily, the game's checkpoints are quite regular, so I didn't have far to go before I was back on track. One of the strangest clipping issues I found saw me being able to move a piece of scenery from some water up onto the land. Once it was there, I was unable to move it back to the water, and it remained there for the rest of my playthrough. So luckily, I had already opened the treasure chest on top of it. A less serious, but still quite jarring issue is the repeated narration when exploring. Every area in the last campfire is connected, so it's possible to backtrack to find any missing forgotten things. But I don't think this was the developer's intention, as revisiting earlier areas will trigger the same piece of narration that played when you were there earlier, completely out of sync with what's happening in the story at the time. Ember felt a great relief to be out of the mist. I could have used a map too. Not because it's easy to get lost or anything, but being able to see which chests I've collected in which areas without having to run around the entire world would have made collecting all of the forgotten things a much more enjoyable experience. Having said that, none of these issues are game breaking, and knowing Hello Games commitment to their other projects, I have a feeling that these issues are going to be patched out in no time. The Last Campfire is one of the best games I've played this year. Its simple mechanics, dance world and head scratching puzzles create a truly fun gameplay experience. The simple, colourful environments and characters are a delight to behold. And when experienced in conjunction with the moving music, ambient sound and beautiful narration, it creates a truly moving experience. The tiny team at Hello Games responsible for The Last Campfire have created something special. And I absolutely recommend this game to anyone who enjoys narrative driven adventures, head scratching puzzles and a lack of violence in their games. At around 6 or 7 hours it never outstays its welcome or feels too short. And at £11.99 in the UK or $14.99 in the US it is an absolute steal. The Last Campfire is also available on the Epic Games Store, Xbox One, Nintendo Switch and Apple Arcade. Just be aware it's a little more expensive on the Switch because Nintendo. But honestly it's worth it regardless. So that is it for my review of The Last Campfire. Have you played it? What do you think? Let me know in the comments below or over on Twitter at GameCupboardRick. But until next time, thank you very much for watching. Don't forget to like, subscribe and all that good stuff. And I will see you in the next video.